Hello and welcome to this Carveco Maker Plus tutorial. My name is Leighton and today we're going to be taking a look at a new tool within Maker Plus which allows you to create reliefs and it's a really really powerful tool called the Shape Editor. So we're basically going to take a look at that and I'm going to revisit the wavy flag tutorial and I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can do that by using the shape editor. Okay so first of all what I'm going to do is create a new model and I'll do this in inches and let's give this let's say a width of 30 inches and Let's do a height of, let's say, 24. Okay. Now, the resolution for this is actually quite important. If I were to do this as a low resolution, the quality of the relief wouldn't be very good. So it would be less crisp and it would be quite jagged. So just bear that in mind. As long as you do it over, let's say, about one and a half thousand, you should be perfectly fine. But if you've got quite a powerful computer, there's no reason why you just can't crank that up to the max. Set your origin, so either any of the corners, as you can see here, or in the center. I'll do this in the center for this job, and then select OK. And it will create that model for me. Right, so first of all, I'm going to explain to you how to actually use the shape editor. And I'm going to show you how it works. There are also numerous ways now that you can do this wavy flag. So I'll show you a few of the different ways that you can do that. Hopefully, I'll give you a few ideas to take on board for your own jobs. Okay, so the shape editor, let me draw a shape. So let's just start off with something basic. So let's draw a circle, okay? Now, I'm just going to middle mouse click and drag just to rotate this around so you can see. And I'm going to open up the shape editor. Now the shape editor is here. So the shortcut for that is F12 and it's also got an icon on the toolbar. So if I click that, you'll see what happens is it shows me the nodes. So it's it's like I've gone into node editing. And I'll show you the reason for that in a moment. So this opens up the shape editor on the right hand side. Now you can do different types of shapes using this. And this tool's been around for a very long time and it's sort of like a go-to tool to create any relief work. Okay, so I'll come back to plane in a moment. This just allows you to add a height. So it just comes up at a height. So if I were to do it for this, it would in effect create sort of a cylinder. Okay, so I'll come back to that in a moment. If I select square, it will automatically create a cone shape for me. Now this works in real time. So you can see everything and you can get feedback instantly. Okay, so if I move that there, it adjusts the height, okay, or the angle of that cone. The same with the round, so this creates a dome, and I can move that up, or I can move that down. Okay, now if I did want to add a flat, what I can do is go back to plane and then I come down to start height. Okay, so let's say I want that to be two inches. So I type in two and it comes up two inches. If I type in 20 inches, it will come up 20 inches. What I can also do is put two on there but do a square or a bevel. So what happens then? It adds two inches at the bottom and then it comes up into the cone. Exactly the same thing with the round. 
two inches at the bottom and then comes into the dome. Now what you can also do is you can limit this to a height. So let me just set that back to zero and I'm going to select to limit to a height. So let's say I've got this dome here like that and that's the angle that I want. I want a 90 degree so it's a full curve but I don't want it to be that high. Now a lot of people when they first use this tool they will be creating reliefs like this. You'll see when you start generating reliefs you'll get these like lumpy bumpy bits that's what we call them. Um, it basically means that the dome's going over too much and you're best off limiting it to a height and it looks a lot better. So what this does, it basically creates a radius around the edge. So if I were to limit this to, to a height of, let's say, one inch, the highest point on the top of this is one inch. So you can see that in the Z there in the bottom right. Okay. Exactly the same with the square, so this will create a chamfer around the edge. So if I limit that to one inch, you can see that it's not got the angle. So if I change the angle there, and let's say that I, I wanted a 45 degree chamfer around this. So that's a 45 degree chamfer coming up one inch. Now you can also add the start height to this. So let's say that I wanted half an inch start height and I wanted it to be, let's say, a quarter of an inch chamfer around the edge. It would just add that quarter of an inch chamfer. Okay, so scale to height, that will basically stretch it's out to whatever height that you say. So if I set that back to zero, and then let's say two inches, it will stretch it out to two inches, okay? So it can't go any higher than two inches, okay? Constant height, this used to be for letters, so when you create letters and you do the shape editor on them, they will all be the exact same height. Okay, so you may be wondering what these points are, these node points. These actually allow you to edit the shape in real time. So if I were to select there and move it, you can see that I can edit this shape. Okay, and you can create some really, really nice artistic effects and freeform shapes. Okay, if you want to enter a node exactly the same as node editing, press I on the keyboard and you can enter a node on there. Okay, so you can basically create some weird and wacky shapes and make sure that it fits properly. So that was a circle. Now, if you want to undo that, you can always go back and undo, and it will take you through all of the steps. Okay, let's say that I wanted to create some sort of love heart. I could do like that. Okay, I'll go back to no limit or maybe limit to height, and it will create this sort of love heart. Okay, so down the bottom here, we have something called Relief Combine Mode, okay? And I'll explain to you what that means. So at the moment, this is set to Add. So I'm happy with that. Add basically just adds any material onto the top of any reliefs that are already there. So because there's nothing there at the moment, I'm just going to select Add, okay? So when you're happy with it, select apply, okay? And then select either cancel or the cross at the top. And it will close the shape editor. And I'll just delete that vector. So there I've got this love heart. Now, if I were to, let's say I wanted to add something onto the top of this, 
Let's draw a circle there. Go back into the shape editor. And let's do maybe a round on the top of there. Now, sometimes the vectors may get in your way. So if you want to just toggle them on and off, just turn off the vector visibility. Okay. So you can again just adjust how you want this to be. Now, if you want this to be standing proud, you can do a positive angle. If you want it sunk into this, then you can do a negative angle. Okay. Now there is another way to do that. You can change it to subtract and do a positive. So if I were to select subtract, you can see that it's going into the relief. Okay, so that's what add and subtract do. So if I were to apply these and then close, you can see that that's just added it to the top of this. Now, if I were to do the same thing, let's say here, let's draw some sort of rectangle going through this and then create, let's say, a square. Now, you can see that if I turn the vectors off, it doesn't look right. What's happening here is that it's adding onto the top of whatever's already there. So the existing relief is adding onto the top of it. Now, for this, I don't really want that, okay? So what I need is merge high. So the main ones that you will use, the main combined modes, will be add and merge high, to be completely honest with you. I wouldn't really use subtract because I would probably do it the negative in there. And merge low does the opposite. So merge high basically merges into the existing relief. Okay, so it's just merging in nicely. Now, if I wanted this to sit on top of this, so I wanted the apex of this to actually go across the top of it, just change the start height and bring it up a touch. So if I do, say, 0.5, maybe three quarters of an inch, you can see it's starting to blend in there. So if I were to make it, let's say, two inches, you can see that it adds a start height here, and then it blends in quite nicely. Now, when you finish with this, select Apply, and then you can select Cancel. Now, one thing that you need to make sure that you do is to get this right, because you haven't got the luxury of something called relief layers in Maker Plus. Okay, so relief layers normally allow you to create something on a separate relief layer and you can edit that relief layer in the future. So you can change anything that's on that particular layer. That's only available in the flagship product Carveco. Okay, so in this version, you need to make sure that you get, you sort of work out how to, how to do things first of all before you actually start designing. Okay, so if you need to, you can undo this and it will take you back through all of the steps. Okay, so if you make a mistake, just undo and it will take you back through those steps. So that's one way of using the shape editor. I've been using vectors to create all of my shapes or my reliefs. Now these have to be closed vectors. It won't work on an open vector, okay? So another way that you can do this is by using color. So if I were to, let's go to the 2D view and then let's delete that. Let's maybe create a bit of a weird shape here. Okay, let's say this shape, I want it to create as a relief, but it's not a shape, it's actually a colour. So I'm going to cheat and turn this into a colour. Okay, so let's select the red colour there, and then I'm going to go to Bitmap, and then Flood Fill Vectors. 
so it turns that vector into a red color. And then I can delete that, okay? So now, if I go to the 3D view and then go under here and then select to display the bitmap, it will show me that color. Okay, so let's open up the shape editor now. And you can see that this is red because I've got it selected on the color palette. If I select that one, it turns to white. So any colors that I select here, and it will change to that color. And it's going to create a shape over that particular color. Now we can also just double click on the screen and it will choose the color. Okay, so now if I go to round and let's go back to add, and bring that up like so, it will then create a relief based on that color. So let's limit that to our height, maybe merge height. See here how this is going over and it's not really what I want. I could come back to the material view so you can see it's not really what I want. So let's go to merge high. You can see it's blending in, blending in nicely. So then apply and then close that. So if you bring, let's say an image in and you bring the colors down so you can actually select these colors, then you can draw reliefs or create reliefs to those particular colors. So I'm gonna show you the two ways to do this with the flag. So we're going to create vectors. I'll show you how you can generate the reliefs using the vectors and also by using colors as well, okay? Right, so I don't really want this and I don't want this bitmap layer, so let's clear that. So if I go to the 2D view and I'll go to clear, it just deletes everything that's on that layer, okay? The 3D view, if I want to get rid of these reliefs and just start again from scratch, if I go up to here to reset the relief, and it just gets rid of it, okay? Right, so let's make a start with the flag. So if I take a plan view of that, and what I'm going to do first of all is import the actual image. So I'm just going to use the exact same image that I did last time, which was this SVG file. And scaling, make sure I select to fit and select open. So let's take a look at the 2D view here. Okay, so that's open the flag, okay? Now, there are a couple of things that I'm going to do to this and I'm also going to show you how you can sort of resize it because last time I really wanted to project this image onto the finished piece and I can show you how you can do that. Okay, now at the moment you can see I've brought this flag in and it only really looks like there's a few colors within this but there aren't, there are lots and lots of colors down the bottom. So what you would normally do is go to a bitmap to vector and you would re reduce the colors so you could trace around this. What I'm going to do is just reduce the colors first of all so I can take a look at it. So if I right click down the bottom on these two colors here, you can see that I get menu and on that menu, I've got reduce number. So if I select that, it's exactly the same tool as when you use the bitmap to vector tool. So if I bring this all the way down to two colors and start bringing some color back into this. Okay, now that is really all that I need, but I don't really want this background here to be the same red color. So. Let's bring another color back into it maybe, maybe one more, like so, and select apply. Now this purple color is a bit strange, so let's try and find out where that is. 
So that looks as though it's just in between the blue on the stars, the blue and the white. So what I'm going to do is left click the blue, right click the purple, and then select this little icon at the top of them. And this will basically link both of them together. Turn all of the purple into blue. Okay, so that looks okay. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So if I take a look at the size of this, I can work out the size that I want this to actually be. So if I select Untitled up here, you can see that the X is 30 inches. Okay, now what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to change this area at the back to a different color. So let's select the white and then right click that color there, this pinky sort of color, and I'm going to link those also. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is add a border around this. So just on the sides of this, I'm going to add a border. Now I could do this by using the same color, the white, but the trouble is with that is that it's going to blend into these white areas here. So if I needed those areas, it wouldn't really work properly. So what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit and use a white color, but a different white color. So if I right click down there and I'm going to add a color, uh, let's select this white and then let's just move it just a touch, just so it's a different color. And then select add to custom colors and okay. And I've got this new white color. Now to add a border, this needs to be the secondary color. Okay, so to avoid any confusion, I'll make the blue the primary, and this color is going to be the secondary color. And I'm going to add a border to this. So if I go to model, and then select to add border, and you can see that I can add a border around this particular piece. I'm not going to do it symmetrical. I'm going to do it left and right, and let's add a border of, let's say, one inch and one inch. Okay, so that's now changed the size of this to be pretty much 32 inches. Now you can see this is the reason why I changed that color because otherwise this would all blend into the same color, but you can see it's actually a different shade. The only reason that I've done that is for when I show the bitmap on the actual model when I've created it or when I've machined it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to create the vectors like I did before on the last tutorial. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. Use bitmap to vector. The colors are already reduced and this time what I'm going to do is select the white color and I'm going to make sure that I've got the primary color selected and create vectors. Okay, and I might as well leave that on there because what I can do is rather than creating a rectangle to a size, I can actually use those to snap to. So if I create a rectangle and I'm going to snap to there, come down and snap to there. And then I can delete that and I can delete that. Okay, so let's drop the contrast. And you can see pretty much all of my vectors ready for the design. So let's turn up the contrast again, and this time I'm going to go to the 3D view and turn on the vectors. So here you can see my vectors for machining. Okay, so I'm going to show you 
a few different ways that you can actually create this, okay? So the first way is to create a base. So we need a base for this to be on. So let's go to the shape editor and I'll rotate this around so I can see. And let's say I want this to be, I don't know, let's say two inches high. Okay, so just enter two inches on that plane. Okay, make sure that you've got add selected and then select apply. Then what we can do is select all of the other vectors, like so, and then it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. You could just drop that down. So you could go negative 0 0.5, turn off the vectors. You can see they're all sunk in. Probably a bit deep. Let's say 2.5. And that sunk all of those vectors in there. Okay, now you could do this using a square. So you could have them standing proud. You could drop them down. Like so. You could limit this to a height. So let's limit it to, let's say, 0.2 maybe. Let's get rid of the star type. Let's try point one. Now the great thing about this tool is that it all works in real time. So you can see everything instantly. And you can just ch make changes and start playing with it until it looks good. So that looks okay. You could also do a round if you wanted to. We'll change the radius. Entirely up to you, however you want to do this. Okay. So if I were to maybe do this like so. And then select apply. Okay. And then what we would do is do exactly the same thing to get the folds that we did before, which was to use the sculpting tools. We'll use an arrays, quite a large brush size. Strength, bring that down, maybe like so. And then all of this happens in real time. So you can see exactly what you're doing and you get instant feedback. Okay, and then you've got your wavy flag. Obviously, I'm doing this quite fast. And then you can close. Okay, so all that you need to do now is machine this. So if we go to tool paths, I'm not going to spend too long machining this because we already pretty much covered this, but you don't need to drop the tool paths. So you can just do this using a 3D toolpath. So if you do maybe selected vectors, so you don't have to machine all of this, turn on the vectors and then select there. Now, maybe you don't have this vector. That's not a problem. It's really easy to get. So the way that you would do that is to, let's delete that. If I wanted the outside vector of this and I haven't got it at the moment, so let's take a plan view. The way that you could do that is go to vector and then create and then relief boundary, okay? And then you can select create boundary in this case, but you can also use a height range. So if that boundary is at a certain height, you can use height range for it and it will create a boundary at that height. So if I select to create boundary, you can see that it's created the edge side vector for me. Okay. So let's go back to the machine relief. Let's move that over there. 
So I'm going to do this over selected vectors. So it's only going to machine inside this vector. Okay. Finishing options. Let's turn off my metric tools, go into inch tools. Uh, let's take a look at what I've got for 3D finishing. Okay, so let's just use the smallest tool that I have. Obviously, you need the tool to go into this area here. You could also V-carve them. It's entirely up to you. I'm just showing you how to do this particular piece. So click select. And I'll do a raster classic. And roughing options. Let's go to the roughing tools that I have. Let's use, let's say, a half inch tool. Define the material. So this actual relief is two inches thick. So it automatically knows that it's two inches thick. Now I've already explained this in the previous video. So if you're not sure about this model position, then I advise you to watch that one. It basically means where the model is in the position of the material. So if you move it up or down. So if I were to make this, let's say 2.5 inches, you can see that I've got half an inch left on the bottom. Or I can have half an inch left on the top. So I'm just going to make it two inches. Material Z0, all dependent upon your CNC machine. Okay, so if you set your datum to be at the top of the material or you set it at the waste board or spile board height. Okay, so select OK. And then that sets up the material. So let's calculate this. Okay, so let's simulate this. So let's take a look at the end mill. Now this probably won't get into too many places, but let's take a look. Okay, so that's roughing out all of those larger areas. And then let's take a look at this ball nose, which is going to finish it. So I'll fast forward it just so we can take a look. Okay, so all that we need to do now is to cut the part out. So whilst the simulation's still up, let's turn on the vectors. And I already have the outside selected. So let's go to toolpaths and create profile toolpath. Going to go on the outside. Automatically knows that it's two inches deep. Let's just select that half inch tool again and then calculate now. And then if I simulate that, you can see that it's cut the part out. Okay, and then go to simulation, delete the waste material. I'll just keep the picked material, close that, and you can see my finished flag. Now what I can do with this now is because I set up the border around the edge of this, I can project the image onto the flag so it gives me a realistic looking finished product so if i go to display bitmap it puts the flag on top of it and i can see what it actually looks like okay and i could take a screenshot of this and send it to a potential customer okay so I'm going to show you another couple of ways that you can use the shape editor to do this. Okay, so let me delete that simulation and let's go back to the material view and I'm going to reset this relief. Okay, and let's go back to the 2D view and I'll turn off my toolpath so I can't see them. Okay, so 
I've got this outside rectangle here. Let's adjust the transparency. I'll keep that. And what I'm going to do is delete all of these stars. And I'm also going to delete all of these. Okay. So all that I have is a rectangle. Okay. So another way that you can use the shape editor is if I were to go to the 3D view, turn on the vectors, all that I have is that. Okay. So let's start off with that because I need to create a base. So go to the shape editor, start height again is going to be two. Okay. And select apply. Now you can leave this open if you wished. Okay. You don't need to close the shape editor every time. So let's display the bitmap so I can see the colors. Okay. So basically what this has done, it's just created a block with this over the top of it. It's just basically draped it over the top of it. Okay. Now, what I can do now is start using the shape editor with colors. So if I were to select that color, so the white, and then if I were to select square, now you can see that what's happening is that it's using the outside as well. Now, I'm not too fussed about that because I'm going to show you how you can sort that out afterwards. I'm glad that that's popped up. Okay, so this is working to the actual color rather than the lines. So if I have reduced the colors, I don't need to create vectors to do this. I could use colors. Okay, so if I do exactly the same thing, let's do a plane and let's do it negative 0.25 and it drops it all down exactly the same as it did before. Now, the problem that I've got is that it's dropped this down as well here because this is the same color. Now, that's really, really easy to sort out, and I'm glad that that happened so I can show you how to do it. So let's select Apply and then Cancel, and I'll go back to my material. Turn off the vectors, okay? And you can see that I've got this step in there, okay? Now, this is really easy to sort out. If I turn the vectors back on and select that vector, what I can do is use one of these tools. So you've got zero under color and you've also got zero inside vector. So if I were to zero inside vector, it basically means that it's going to trim or cut everything that's inside that vector. So if I click it, it gets rid of my flag. Okay. So let's undo that and then Let's select the one that's on the flyout menu, zero outside vector, and it will bring this step back up to the zero plane. Okay, and it's got rid of what was created then. Okay, so let's show you another way that you can do this. So that was using colors. Another way that you could do this is to import the image straight away into it, especially if it's a piece of clip art. Okay, so let's reset the relief again and I'll create another two inch high base there. And what I'm going to do now is to import that image straight away and see what that looks like. Okay, so if I go to relief and import and then import again, and what this does, it automatically creates a relief for this image. So if I select open, now you can see it's absolutely huge at the moment. It's 2,800 inches. Okay, so it's, it's fairly large. So if I select 30 and apply, and now this has moved this somewhere in the screen. I think it's over here somewhere. So I know that that's already selected. So if I press F9, it will move it back into the center. Okay. Now, if I move that out of the way so I can see it, at the moment, if I press F9, it places it underneath this piece that I already have. So 
it may be better to create the base afterwards. Okay, it's entirely up to you. If you create the base afterwards, you'll be able to see this in the correct position. But I'm not too fussed about that, to be honest with you. So if I were to bring that down like so, maybe let's bring it down to 0 0.25. Okay, now that's a positive. Okay. Now let's say that I didn't want that to be positive. I wanted it to be negative. So I'll show you what it looks like at the moment. So if I press F9, and then you've got two options. You can either just press enter on the keyboard to paste it, or you can select paste down here. Now I've actually changed this combined mode here. Normally this will be set to be add, which is that one. Okay, so if I select paste, this has just added it onto the top. Okay, just straight away from a, an image, created the relief. Now if I undo that, so if I go to undo, it will then create another piece of clip art, or it will go back to clip art. So there you can see it's hiding underneath there. So if I select it, and then go to transform, just move it out of the way again. And this time, let's put it back to 0.25 and apply. So I need to make sure that this is set to subtract, which is that one. So if I select to move that into the center and select paste, then this will subtract it from whatever's already there, okay? And it gives me the same sort of design. Now I can also go even further with this design. I can add things onto the top of this. So let's add some clip art to this. Now this would probably be a lot easier to do if I hadn't have already generated this relief and I kept all of the vectors to do this. But what I'm going to do is just show you how to do it, okay? So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to, let's first of all take a look at what I have. So maybe, let's take a look at this eagle. So if I drag that in, let's resize it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is give this a, a size, okay? So let's give it a perfect size. So I know the exact size of this. So let's say that I want this to be, let's say 12 inches wide. Okay, let's select apply. And then the Z range, it's going to be, I don't know, let's say quarter of an inch. Okay, let's take a plan view of that just so I can see it. Okay, so maybe bring that down a touch to there. Okay, right, so what I want to do with this is I want to paste this down, but I basically want to trim off what's already there, okay? So if I go to more options, you can see that there is a, a mode called replace. So what this does, it trims out what's already there. And you can also paste the outline vector down. Okay, so if I paste that, you can see what's happened is if I turn the vectors off, it's cut all of that out. Okay, and pasted that down. It's also left me with a vector for it. Okay, which is basically the, the only reason that I've done this. So I can bring this vector up, okay? So if I were to bring this up by using the shape editor, let's turn off that, and let's just do a star size of let's say two, like so. Make sure that I've got merge high selected because otherwise if I were to do it like this, I would get all of these spikes. The reason for this is that because both of the reliefs that I have there share the same pixel. 
So it's it doesn't know whether to bring which part to bring up by two inches. That's why you get those spikes. So if I change that to merge high, it basically gives me a base. Now what I can do with this is I can bring it up a little bit further. Let's say like so. And I could add a chamfer to this if I wanted to. So if I were to say square and then limit it to a height, and let's limit it to a height of let's say 0.1. Okay, and I could probably bring that back down to two to be honest. And it would still give me that. So maybe even less than that. Okay, just so it gives me a little chamfer around the edge. Okay, so now what I can do is bring in that piece of clip art again and put that on the top of this base that I've created. So make sure to select apply and then let's cancel that and then bring in the eagle again. Let's resize it and I think I've done this 12 inches wide and apply and then Let's set the Z range, let's say I want this to be 0.2 high. And now what I need to do is align this, okay? So I need this to be in the same position. Now I could just grab that and place it somewhere near. What I'm going to do is select the original vector as the second vector. So make sure that that's the second one that I've selected. And then I'm going to go close that, go to vector, and then align, and rather than center in model, I'm going to select center. This will move that into the center of there. Okay, so it's in the right position now. Just need to make sure that I get add selected, and I'll turn off paste vector outline. Select paste, turn off the vectors. I can delete that. And you can see that I've got my eagle on the top of that. Okay, now if I wanted this to be folded, so it's a wavy flag, again, because these are already pasted down, just go back to your sculpting tools and you can start bringing that down. And it will automatically do it. Okay. And then just machine that in exactly the same way. Okay, so that brings an end to this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful and we covered quite a lot to do with the shape editor. It's a fantastic tool and you can do some really, really cool stuff with it. So thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.